So we're back with Chris Weiss at Zappos in Henderson, Nevada. Chris is an architectural lead and he was going to talk a little bit about the architecture for the website and the greater enterprise. So as you might imagine on our public website, whenever a customer is interacting with us, uh, they're going to send a, a web request. Somebody goes to the home page of Zappos. Uh, it's going to request to that home page and if you know much about how HTTP works, obviously, it's not just that request, but that home page is also going to spawn off requests for images and other assets, movies, sound. We actually use Akamai as a caching service for us. And so all of those, everything that we've got that's a static resource is cached in Akamai, so all of the images and so forth are sent directly. Uh, anybody who is going to request that kind of information from us, first they're going to go through Akamai. If Akamai has it in one of their caches, then it's going to go from be served from them and not served from us. This is significant for us for two purposes. One, it drastically reduces the amount of requests that we take. A lot of them are intercepted by our cache layer. But then two, it also serves with the principle of locality. The idea that if we have a customer who's in New York uh, and they're requesting a given image from us. If, it would, if they were to request it from us, it would have to go all the way across the country if it was coming from our servers. But if they can get it from an Akamai cache hit nearby, they are going to get a faster response. And fast response is part of what makes a good sale. So first they're going to go through the Akamai layer. But like any cache, there might be a cache miss. And not everything goes through Akamai. Uh, there are some th things that obviously don't go through Akamai because they're not shared resources. When you are going to, for instance, your cart page, your cart does not look like anybody else's and it changes too rapidly to be worth caching. So cart requests come all the way to us. Checkout requests come all the way to us. But search requests may be intercepted by Akamai if your search looks enough like other people's searches. Product pages may be uh, uh, basically the page that actually shows you a product and allows you to put it into your cart. Uh, very often will be uh, intercepted by Akamai as well. But assume that that did not happen. Assume that they did not already have that in cache. It's going to come through there and it's going to go through a special layer of ours called ZFC, the Zappos Flux Capacitor, or something else if that name happens to be reserved by uh, trademark infringement. <laughs> The Zappos Flux Capacitor ZFC is basically a combination uh, monitor uh, and very intelligent router. It does several things for us. It both allows us to multiplex a lot of different URLs. Uh, it allows us to create custom URLs that are easy for human beings to remember and then uh, send that request on to a URL that's more convenient for us to generate on the back end. And one thing that it did that uh, is, was very intrinsic and important to us uh, a couple years ago was back when we were still running the website, as we were building the Java version of the website, and we were still running the Perl version of the website, we did not release the Java version of the website all at once. We built out the product pages and we started sending some of the product over there. And ZFC actually acted as that switch that allowed us to serve some of the website from Perl and some of the website from Java. Now all of the website can serve from Java. So ZFC is then going to direct, pick which one of its upstreams are going to be uh, more appropriate. Excuse me, one, which one of its downstreams are going to be more appropriate. Assuming that it's, say, a product page request, ZFC will forward that on to the next layer, which is Varnish for us. We use Varnish is our in-house cache. Uh, reason we have an in-house cache, even though we still have an outside cache, this is the one that is directly under our control. Uh, and it is mainly there for surge caching. So this takes care of us. It basically protects our web servers in case uh, we have had to serve a cache clear through Akamai. For instance, if a product page, we need to flush its cache because perhaps it, something has gone out of stock. We want to force Akamai to reload that from us. That can result in us taking an enormous cascade of requests really, really fast. In order to prevent, protect our servers from that, we'll have an internal level cache. The difference is these will have a time to live of about three hours. This will have a time to live of about five minutes. It's very, very short and easy for us to flush it rapidly. And then if it gets through all of those layers, then it will talk to our website layer.
all computer scientists have terrible handwriting. This has been studied many, many times and is proven to be true. Or, potentially, it might be served from our Patron layer. Both of these, uh, the Patron layer serves JSON, the Zeta layer serves HTML, but they can both be thought of as essentially doing the same thing. Then they're going to have to perform some function. If somebody is looking at a product page, or alternatively, if an API client is requesting product information, they're both going to be forwarded down to here. Well, and question? They, absolutely. Zeta, the Zeta layer, is that a Linux server running Apache? What is that? Ah, excellent. So we are running uh, Linux servers here. These are all on CentOS now, I believe. Uh, and then the Zeta server itself is actually running uh, Apache Tomcat. Um, I should call out that these are both running Apache Tomcats. They're both Java layers. ZFC itself is running on Nginx. And for example, over here, if we had our image servers, Obviously, we have, uh, at this instant, we have something on the order of 5 million items in inventory. Don't quote me exactly on that number, but about 5 million items in our warehouse. Um, each one of them has a photograph, and so we have lots and lots of static images. Uh, that, and that's not counting all of the ones that we have stored for everything we have ever sold for the past 12 years. It doesn't really make sense to try and serve that much static content out of a Tomcat. That's not what it's... Uh, specialized for, uh, and so the image servers are also all running. At one point, they used to all be running uh, Apache. Uh, I think that we have, at this point, converted all of them to Nginx as well. We do run Nginx and a lot of different layers, uh, simply because we are kind of fans of its non-blocking architecture. These will all be running on Tomcat, and underneath, they will be going up against our Zappy layer. One thing you'll get if you talk to a lot of people at Zappos is this unfortunate tendency of ours to prefix everything with a Z. But, or possibly suffix it with a Z. They will end up making web requests to the Zappy layer. These are web requests. So Zappy itself is an HTTP server. It's also running on Apache Tomcat. And when I draw these boxes here, I'm drawing them as if they are single servers. Obviously, in real life, they're not. Uh, in real life, this is going against a load balanced URL that is in fronting a, a pool of servers. As a matter of fact, to go one step further, uh, our Zeta pool, you can imagine Zeta as a pool of servers that are being served under this URL with N servers behind that. We actually always have two. Uh, we have two full, two full pools of servers, and typically, uh, one of them will be serving the current release of the soft system, and the other pool will be available for staging the next release of the system. Releasing software for us basically is a matter of deploying to that other pool and flipping the switch. And then if anything is wrong and we messed it up, it's a matter of flipping the switch back. So, and there, that would be true at all of this, these various layers. Zappy layer is a HTTP layer. It's a web service. Um, this is the one where we were talking about before where everything is uh, can serve a special customized uh, Java only protocol if it's talking to Zeta where there's really really high load but for instance we do have our other systems uh, for customer service that's coming from our own customer service department that's all still written in Perl it will tend to kind of communicate with the Zappy layer uh, over uh, either JSON or XML then behind, hidden behind the Zappy layer will be various databases. And are those Postgres, MySQL? Excellent question. These are all MySQL. The company started out with MySQL and has been with it for a long time. Uh, the company does now have Oracle databases as well. Those serve our financials and also uh, serve our data warehouse for statistics and analysis. And we also have one of our other big systems, I shouldn't really draw this one as a cylinder, but I'm not exactly sure what I would draw it as. Uh, Solar, which is essentially a large text index if you've ever uh, worked with it before. It's essentially a web version of uh, the Lucene full text indexing system. That's used uh, on our search pages uh, on the public website. 
Also, uh, we are uh, while we're working with solar right now, solar is very central to our system. We're also starting to experiment with using uh, elastic search service or, uh, for performing similar kinds of functionalities. Elastic search service is also Lucene under the covers, but uh, it has some other functionality around partitioning the databases that we would like. So. Um, Obviously, any of these layers above, because this is a, a service-oriented architecture, the layers above here do not have direct access to any of these systems. Uh, they only have access to the endpoints as defined by our layers. About one year ago, originally when we were first moving from Perl to uh, Java, basically all of the services were thrown into one big uh, API that was then served. One thing that came about after that is you start to realize that with one big API, you have to be very careful when you're rolling your releases um, because you're building a new release of the API as you're adding new functionality. That can be very difficult and it can be very risk prone because if you build a gigantic release of the API and anything is wrong with it, it can force you to roll back an entire set of changes. So one of the things that we have been doing starting about a year ago is breaking that gi single gigantic API down one of the first sets of that was a little thing that we call the Helios and Atlas layer. That actually split out the uh, full text indexes and all of the search functionality that was in Zeta. Named Helios because the uh, search guys were very much into solar and they wanted to stick with the theme. And so now actually all of the search pages on our website are served from a separate bank of servers uh, and an independent code base from the rest of the website. That actually allows us, since our search pages constitute a lot of our traffic, something on the order of 65% of all of our traffic, that allows them to iterate more rapidly and also as you might guess, when you run a, a website like ours, uh, certain pages, like the credit card, uh, the pages that accept your credit card or the pages that accept your customer information, are more risk prone than other pages. The search pages are not particularly risk prone. There's everything that's on them is public information that we'll share with anybody. So uh, by splitting it out, we allow them, because they're doing a relatively low risk job, they're allowed to iterate. Uh, much more rapidly than some of the other sections of the website that maybe need more due diligence. This is a, pro uh, this is a project that is actually continuing uh, just as the search pages have been split out. Uh, the this Zappy layer is being split into N, I want to say five, but that number bounces around, uh, different stacks for serving different pieces and all of that around that idea of by minimizing the scope, minimizing the risk, you increase the rapidity at which you can roll without putting everything else at risk. That's great. Thanks, Chris.